This video has been prepared to support the formal consultation for Rampion 2 and focuses on the land reinstatement or restoration process which takes place as part of the onshore cable route and substation construction. The onshore cables will enable power generated by Rampion 2 to be safely transmitted to a new electricity substation where the power will be stepped up in voltage to 400 kV, allowing a smooth and compatible connection to the Bolney substation in Twynham, Mid-Sussex. Stretching 36 km from Klimping Beach to Bolney, the cables will be buried underground for the entirety of the route. The cable installation process involves digging parallel trenches, laying ducts and backfilling the trenches. At a later date, the cables are pulled through the ducting from joint bays located at various intervals along the route. The joint bays are also buried, but access to cables for maintenance and repair is available through buried access points if required. This construction method is worked in short sections along the cable route to minimise overall disturbance. It also enables reduced construction time and quicker land reinstatement because the land restoration can take place before the cables are pulled through the pre-laid ducts. At railways, major roads and river crossings, we will use horizontal directional drilling, a tunnelling technique, to avoid land disturbance in order to keep traffic and trains running and reduce environmental impacts at river crossings. Although there will inevitably be some disruption to communities during cable route construction, the work programme will be managed and carefully sequenced to ensure that we are considerate, cause as little disruption as possible and restore the land back to its original condition. To help illustrate this process, we can show our track record from the original Rampion Scheme's onshore cable route construction, which employed the same construction techniques proposed for Rampion 2. The landscape that needed to be crossed for the original scheme provides some very useful comparisons and lessons for Rampion 2. Using detailed aerial photography of the original Rampion cable route from different time periods, we can visually compare the effects on the landscape before, during and after construction. For example, the cable route crossed the A283 and River Ada near the upper beading disused cement works and quarry. The image on the left is aerial photography taken before construction of the original Rampion cable route taken in 2015. The middle image was taken in 2016, whilst the cable route was under construction. You can clearly see the working corridor, and if you look carefully, equipment and temporary structures on the ground. And then the image on the right shows the same area in 2020, after construction has completed. The land has been reinstated and vegetation has started to grow. In 2020, arable farming was quickly back to normal and crops are clearly growing, with little evidence of the cable route buried below the ground. This location is also a good example of where we used drilling techniques to tunnel underneath the River Ada, public footpath, a national cycle route and the A283 Stenning Road to minimise disruption. Also. Where the drilled cable route re-emerges east of the road, you can see how we carefully avoided an area of ancient woodland. A little further north, near Tottington Mount, is a very sensitive habitat known as calcareous or chalk grassland, which is very similar to the chalk grassland at Warning Camp on the Rampion 2 cable route. A unique mix of grassland species are able to thrive on very thin topsoil lying above the chalk. To reduce the potential for soil erosion and ensure successful reinstatement, a specialist construction methodology was required. Large sections of turf were removed, stored and replaced in a matter of days once the cable was installed. This enabled the grasses and topsoil to remain in situ with the chalk beneath. Seeds were harvested to store in the Royal Kew Gardens seed bank to reinforce the reinstatement works where required. However, the turfing solution was a success. We are now well into a 10-year commitment to monitor and manage the progress of land reinstatement for the original Rampion cable route. As you can see from the imagery, land is recovering very well from the disturbance, although it's not yet complete.
In some places, the path of the cable route can still be made out in the 2020 aerial photography. However, closer-up views show that this is partly because some areas are still fenced off to promote regrowth. Both the onshore and offshore impacts of Rampion 2 construction are being fully assessed as part of the environmental impact assessment process. Consideration of opportunities to mitigate the effects of the development forms part of this assessment. This will include a wide range of mitigation measures aimed at delivering a better environment in the long term, including actions to protect and promote biodiversity, maintain and strengthen the landscape. The location, type and design of these mitigation measures is still being carefully considered and will be set out in detail during later stages of the project. Hi, I'm Alan Kirby and I'm leading the ecological assessments for the onshore elements of the Rampion 2 proposal. Enhancing and creating habitats to provide for a range of notable and legally protected species, providing sustainable drainage solutions and maintaining the local landscape character will all enable the project to secure a positive legacy for areas crossed by the onshore cables in the long term. The types of habitat that will be created or enhanced as part of the project are likely to include chalk grassland, broadleaf woodland, ponds and hedgerows, all habitat types characteristic of the landscape crossed by the onshore cable route. The makeup of these habitats is really important to ensure that they have a lasting benefit. We will design these to ensure that they are able to adapt to a changing climate whilst also being characteristic of the local area and attractive to the local fauna. Habitats created and enhanced will be designed to ensure that they are as large as possible, of really good quality and connected to other similar habitats in the landscape. They will be structured to provide a wide range of opportunities to a variety of important local fauna. This could include bats, dormice, various invertebrates and birds. The habitats created and enhanced will be managed in the long term to ensure that they reach their ecological potential. The timing and locations of the habitat creation and enhancement are not known at this time, but will be detailed at the time of application. This video has provided just a few examples of how we're determined to ensure that the physical and environmental effects of Rampion 2 are well managed to minimise long-term effects. Rampion has sustainability at the very heart of its offshore wind power generation and we understand that being a good neighbour to the environment and communities of West Sussex is a key part of this. For further information about Rampion 2, visit our website at www.rampion2.com. Thank you.